a police officer murders his wife, tampers with the evidence, tries to make it look like suicide. He has now been convicted of murder. Have you heard about it? No, there's absolutely no national coverage whatsoever on this story. But that changes today, put up his mug shot. Okay, let me give you background. This is in Putnam County, Georgia. Former police officer will now spend the rest of his life in prison for murdering his wife. Now this guy was actually a cop when he committed the murder. But there's a background associated to this crime that's quite ironic. Given the fact he was already arrested for attacking his wife. He was still employed by the police department, let go by the judge, went back to the house, killed the wife, staged the scene, corrupted the evidence, and tried to make it look like a suicide. He was still employed by the police department. According to Putnam County Sheriff Howard Seals, Michael Perot was found guilty on all counts Friday in connection with the 2020 death a 44 year old Amanda Perot. His charges include malice murder, felony murder, and aggravated assault. Now there are some other charges that should have been affixed to this criminal. He should have been charged with violating his oath of office. Here's why, he tampered with evidence, filed a false police report, and decided to intentionally manipulate a crime scene. He was a cop when he did all of this. The reason why he was not charged with these things is because they would then have to unravel every case he was involved in. So they decided to keep it just on the murder of his wife, wrong move. There's more, Perot was initially arrested on January 28th, 2020 and charged with simple battery on his wife, Amanda. In addition to simple battery, he was also charged with child cruelty because his eight year old daughter was present at the time, he was still a cop. Now he did end up being sentenced to life um, without parole by Judge Brenda uh, Trammell who's in that district. He was released on a $1,500 bond the next day, so this guy, Beats up his wife, he gets a child cruelty charge because he does it in front of his child. According to people that know the wife or that knew the wife, she's dead now. He was abusive, he was significantly abusive, okay? So he does all of this, he gets to go home, $1,500 bond. At his bond hearing, the chief magistrate wanted to put him in a condition that he have no contact with his wife, but she assured the court. She assured the court that her husband had no place to go and was okay to go home. Days later, Amanda, his wife, was killed by that criminal, a criminal with a badge. She vouched for him. The magistrate judge should have stuck to the guns of the sentencing, of the probation, excuse me, of the bond hearing and said, no, it's traditional. We do a no contact bond on cases like this. Yana, he has nowhere to go. He's a police officer, first time it has happened. All of those were lies, by the way. We now know it was not the first time, but she vouched for him. She believed in him and she's dead because of it. Michael claimed she killed herself in front of him. So the cop says, hey, it was a suicide, just coincidence. It happens when I got home from being locked up for beating up my wife. All right, so she killed herself in front of him according to his narrative and no one else was home at the time of her death. Seals described it as suspicious, talking about the sheriff, due to to the evidence and circumstances surrounding his initial arrest. Remember, the initial arrest was for violence against his wife, all right? The sheriff also revealed that Perot did not call 911. So when they checked his phone records, this clown called his boss, Chief Kent Lawrence at the police station after he committed murder. The chief put the cop who committed murder on unpaid leave 
at the court hearing later Friday, Seals testified it was obvious from the jump that this cop killed his wife and tried to stage it based on details at the scene. A neighbor who gave Amanda refuge in their home also testified saying she told them if anything happened, she did not kill herself. Now there, there's a lot to unpack here. Number one, let's go straight to the law enforcement policy angle. This is why I advocate for psychological evaluations every six months for every single cop in the United States of America. Somebody should have picked up on this immediately. Here's a secondary issue here. The friend, the neighbor was aware of the abuse, went into detail about the abuse in a later conversation. If you are a friend to somebody who is being abused, I know you love the relationship you have with that person and they may be mad at you for reporting violence against them. They may be upset, but damn it, they'll be alive. They will be alive. The judge who wanted to do the traditional thing, which is no contact bond, was talked out of it by the wife. Judges, stop it. Just because he's a cop. You had plenty of people that said the same thing in that courtroom and you said, no, we're not going to take that risk. Please understand the data here, here, judges. The data says that police officers are more likely than the average citizen to do something like this. More likely, not less, more. All right, Uh, Ravana, I know you know this stuff much more than I do. Give us some of your insight here. Yeah, well, first I wanna say the uh, the man who killed his wife, the cop who killed his wife is not the only person who killed her. It's the systemic failings of the yeah. court that allowed him to return home to her uh, and eventually murder her when they should not have done that. They should have known better. It's not the traditional courts of action. Um, but like you said, cops are more likely to be engaged in domestic violence. I think the stat is about 40% of cops self report that they uh, engage in domestic violence against their partners or their spouses. Uh, but we don't see 40% of cops who are doing this being held accountable. We don't see justice for the victims that are predominantly their wives, uh, their their girlfriends, these women. We don't see justice for them. So stories like this just makes you wonder, you know, how many women have the their police officer husbands returning home to them at the end of the day uh, to you know victimize them, to torture them. Yep. And abuse them who will never see justice. Uh, you know, and it's just a we need to continue to advocate for these women and we need to continue to advocate for accountability. Uh, and like you mentioned, there's more charges that could have been brought against this police officer. Uh, and you know, it's another failing that they weren't, although he'll be spending the rest of his life in prison. Um, you know, it's a it is a systemic failure still that they did not throw the book at him because right. the police, uh, you know, the the police office itself. Uh, did not want to be more introspective. Did not want to have to do that extra work, uh, you know, to hold themselves accountable for for what you know the this uh, abuse could also mean for the cases that uh, they have handled. Yeah, this cop demonstrated that he's willing to lie on police reports. He's willing to manipulate evidence. He's willing to stage a crime scene. He's willing to violate his oath of office, and he was employed by that office while doing so. They should look at his background. They now have to investigate everything he swore to, every affidavit he may have signed. Every time he gave a testimony, he said, that's the person that needs to be scrutinized.